Addy Soldiers. I have done two of these videos so far and I love doing them because I feel like everyone associates me with just the YA stuff. And I'm I'm not mad at that, honestly. I do read other stuff, you know? Like, I, I do. There, there are many things that I read. Uh, so let me say again that YA is mostly talked about in the booktube community as like the be-all end-all holy grail, which to some degree it is. But not a lot of regular adult fiction is talked about, but as both an English major and a bookstore employee, I talk about that a lot. So welcome all of you to part three of my favorite non-YA books. Number one is gonna be a TV show and I'm so excited because it looks like it's gonna be great and that is Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. Everyone's always talking about how this book is hilarious and it's not only hilarious, it's clever and I love that kind of clever humor. It has to do with an angel and a demon and the antichrist and the end of the world and that doesn't seem very funny but they made it work so well and it's hilarious because the demon is just a little sass bucket and the angel has just had to put up with him for a millennium and is now kind of treating him like this pet that's like being really frustrated. He's like, oh my god, no, we're not friends. Stop doing that. Stop touching that. Just get it out of your mouth. We have the four horsemen of the apocalypse introduced in probably the most ridiculous and hilarious way that they have ever been portrayed in media. And the idea of the world ending is just so outlandish. And you have to suspend your disbelief for a lot of it, but that's why I loved it, because it's just such a, a, you know, intense topic that's been talked about in literature for eons, and then they have this, which is just a ridiculous retelling of it. Highly recommend. It's just, it's small and fun. Next has a gorgeous cover. Be warned, it might blind you. And that is City of Brass by S.A. Chakravorty. This is an Arabian fantasy novel that takes from 1001 Arabian Nights. This is absolutely gorgeous to read. Gorgeous to think about, gorgeous to look at. I love how at the beginning the main character, even though she knows like she's not totally normal, she is not having all of this magic stuff. She's like, no, that doesn't happen. Flying carpets aren't real. You're being ridiculous. Stop trying to get me to do the thing. I don't want to do the thing. I don't care if I'm the chosen one or I can do a thing. I'm not coming with you. And the main guy character, genie person, I don't know what to feel about him. And he has a very interesting storyline that's very different than any other romantic interest or side character that I've read about in a very long time. The city just seems beautiful. The plot twist at the end was stellar. This, the whole aesthetic of this book, both visually and mentally, visually, visualizing it, the whole thing is just full of fire. And I can't wait for what else she writes. Now for something the complete opposite. And that is a very classic that I totally read in high school when I was supposed to, and that is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I had to read this in my Victorian lit class for school, and I have been sleeping on these classics, man. I am very happy that I did. Everyone raves about this book being like the feminist one, and you know, Jane being like, I don't care, like I'm gonna do my own thing, and I'm not pretty, and like whatever, because I'm smart. And yeah, I did get a good degree of that, but I really like the sass, and it's like, it's old English. It's a little bit difficult to understand, but once you get into the groove of like getting how both society works and both how Charlotte Bronte writes, this is actually a really great novel and I'm really, I wrote a whole essay on it. I'm really happy that I read it. Another book that I had to read for school that I thought I was not going to like, but ended up loving. <sighs> God damn it, Margaret Atwood, you got me. I really enjoyed Year of the Flood. I have said on this channel since I started that I don't like Margaret Atwood. I don't like her short stories. I didn't like Handmaid's Tale. I find her writing very stuffy and hard to follow. And then I had to read this and I really enjoyed it. This is in a dystopian future world where medical companies have taken over the job market and now it's full of gangs on the streets and mass slums and very strange religions that have cropped up. And two of the main characters uh, eventually find each other at this religious cult. Two very strong female characters in their own right and I liked reading from the older and the younger perspectives like as the, as the world has kind of gone to shit and it was an interesting future to think about. Some of it could be real, some of us would outlandish, but all in all, this was really well developed as the story went along. Now for one of my favorite books, everybody knows that I love fairies. It's just a thing. I love creepy fairies and creepy fairy tales. I love weird stuff. I love magic. And Borderline by Michelle Baker really surprised me. This book has it all. We got magic and we got fairies and we got other mythical creatures, but we also have a main character who suffers from multiple mental disorders, PTSD, depression, and she's also a double amputee. And she's not a good person. She's kind of a dick. And I love that about her. It takes place in Los Angeles and the whole like movie acting scene is deeply integrated into fairy lore and how fairies have kind of like taken over media and film. It's such a cool concept and the way that Michelle Baker writes her main character, like you hate her, 
but I love the world so much that I'm along for the ride. This is a great blend of gritty urban fantasy, but also like a film star kind of perspective, and then also from someone that has gone through a lot of mental craziness, and I love the way that she combined those two so that it wasn't ultimately focused on one or the other, but just integrated so nicely. I don't know how she did it, but it's wonderful. And lastly, I saved the weirdest for last. I still don't know if I liked it or not, but it's on this list because I need to make other people read it so that they can understand what I went through mentally. And that is The Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins. This book is straight fucked up. It's so weird. It's so strange. It has kind of a magic realism thing to it, sort of. Because one of the main characters was taken when she was a child to go live with Father, who lives in this magical house that's outside of dimensions, and she and her siblings each train in an art. Um, they're not allowed to learn anyone else's, and it becomes kind of an allegory for like the Horseman of the Apocalypse, and then Father goes missing, and she's trying to find him, but also like human forces get involved. It's really, really weird. Another one of those, like, the world's gonna end, and there's, like, all these supernatural forces that are around it, but it's not supernatural, but it's not paranormal. It's just weird. I love me a book with a good mind fuck in it, and this was last year's book, so I'm not really sure what can top this, because I think I stared at his space for a good 15 minutes after finishing it, being like, I... Yeah, no, no, I still don't get it. So that's a wrap on part three of my favorite non-YA books. Please leave down below if you have your own comments or ideas about these books. I know some people that I know that watch my videos have read them, so let's start that discussion because I really want to know people's opinions on some of these. So make sure to leave other recommendations. I would love to, you know, expand my reading a little bit, as I always do. You know where to click to like the video, you know where to click to subscribe. I hope you guys are all having a nice day wherever you are, and I will see you all next week. Bye!